everyone. Welcome to Edu Made Easy. We offer a collection of free resources for IGCSC and checkpoint exams. For more, please visit www.edumadeeasy.com. Today, we'll be solving the Chemistry 0620 question bank on the topic of petrochemicals and polymers. Let's get started. So the first question is this. So usually, this is the first question in the majority of paper three and paper fours. So they give you like a bunch of compounds and you basically have to match the description uh, to the compound or the structure in this case. So I have these structures here. So the first one, so the question is state which structure out of the seven represents each of these statements here. So what is a structure that, what is the structure of a compound that contributes to acid rain? So when we look at acid rain, there are actually two kind of compounds that kind of contribute to it. So we can either have sulfur dioxide or nitrogen dioxide. So you're supposed to be familiar, I think, with both. Sulfur dioxide basically combines with the water and air, uh, water and oxygen in the air to form sulfuric acid, which then later falls down as acid rain. And then nitrogen dioxide from, uh, can act as a catalyst to the um, formation of acid rain by sulfur dioxide, but itself can also directly make acid rain by reacting with, again, the water and oxygen in the air to form nitric acid. So these both form some type of acid to fall down as acid rain. So let's see what we have here. Um, so instantly I can see that B is going to be sulfur dioxide, which is obviously a compound that contributes to acid rain. So that's B. So next is a product of respiration. So the equation of respiration you guys should be familiar with. It's going to be glucose plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water. So a product of respiration would either be carbon dioxide or water. So it's going to be G because you can see carbon dioxide here. Next is a hydrocarbon that decolorizes aqueous bromine. So this is a test that we use in hydrocarbons uh, to identify if it's a saturated or unsaturated hydrocarbon. So a saturated hydrocarbon is one that contains only single carbon-carbon bonds, while obviously unsaturated would contain double or maybe even triple carbon-carbon um, bonds. So here, something that will decolorize aqueous bromine would be an unsaturated hydrocarbon. Therefore, it would contain a double bond. So you can see specifically here that C is an alkene as it contains that double carbon-carbon bond. So therefore, it would decolorize aqueous bromine. Next is a carboxylic, carboxylic acid. Sorry, um, carboxylic acids you can identify with the functional group COOH. So there would be a double bond with the carbon and oxygen, and then there would be an OH group like that. So you can clearly see here that D is a carboxylic acid as it contains that COOH uh, functional group. Next is a compound that is the main constituent of natural gas. So the main constituent of um, sorry, natural gas is methane, which is denoted by the formula CH4, and which you can see clearly in A. So CH4 is an alkene or methane, so therefore A. Okay, compound C can be produced by cracking the kerosene fraction of petroleum. Compound C is what? So there's two carbons, so we can know how to name it by monkeys eat peeled bananas. That's kind of a, I guess, mnemonic you can learn. Um, so M would be one carbon, E would be two carbons, uh, P3 and B4. And usually it's meth, eth, pro, prop, and but. So those are the kind of the starts, starting for the um, the number of carbons. And then depending on the homologous series, you have different endings as well. So this is going to be methane. 
So ethene can be produced by cracking the kerosene fraction of petroleum. So cracking is a way we can produce alkene. Uh, so what they're asking what the uh, meaning of the term cracking is. So cracking is going to be the breakdown of long chain hydrocarbon. So breakdown of long chain hydrocarbons. And that's your first mark. And for the second mark, people often forget this. You have to say by heat. Or oh, also to sorry to short the chain hydrocarbons by heat. So you can also say, yeah, these two you definitely have to say, my bad. Um by heat is an optional one because you can in A levels you'll eventually learn that you can actually do two types of cracking, which is catalytic cracking and also thermal cracking. So it's not necessarily only with so cracking is the breakdown of long chain hydrocarbons to shorter chain hydrocarbons. Okay, now it says to complete the chemical equation for the cracking of C13H28 to form C8H18 and one other hydrocarbon. So when we crack alkanes, which is here, this is an alkene. How do we know that? Because if we check the general formula of an alkene, it should fit. So see, 13, 30 times 2 is 26, 26 plus 2 is 28. So this is an alkene. And we crack alkenes to form uh, alkenes and alkenes, right? So one product has to be an alkene. The other definitely has to be an alkene. So here, again, let's identify if it's an alkene or an alkene with these general formula. So this is for alkene, so alkene. C it H H eighteen, sorry, would be an alkene because again it follows that general formula. And now when you're completing the chemical equation, you have to basically add up the total number of carbons from the reactant side. So if you have C eight already in the product side, you want to make C thirteen, so it'll be C five. And then H twenty eight on this side, you have eighteen, so it's eighteen plus ten would be twenty eight. So that's how you do it. And just to double check, this has to be an alkene. And it is correct because it um, goes along with the general formula of an alkene. OK. So part of the synthetic polymer nylon is shown in the diagram. So nylon is going to be a polyamide. Because it contains um, the CONH, so this is what we call the functional group of a polyamide. We call this a peptide bond. Um, circle one, amide linkage. Uh, that's going to be this, basically. This is the amide linkage we see. Complete the structures of the two monomers that react to form nylon. So nylon, a polyamide, reacts with a dicarboxylic acid. So let me just write dicarboxylic acid. And a amine, diamide group. So how would I draw the diamine group? It would basically be two NH tools on either side. And this obviously like how you would normally draw a carboxylic acid. Like this. Okay. Name the other product formed when nylon is formed. So basically when you're making a polymer of any kind, it is going to be a condensation reaction. So you'll get water. Uh, items made from nylon are often disposed of by burying them in the ground. This is called landfill. Why is the disposal of nylon using landfill a problem? So nylon is a polymer. It is non-biodegradable. Therefore, it's going to remain in a landfill for a really long time. So this kind of space, uh, it limits the space of the landfill as well. And it is pretty toxic because uh, when you burn it, uh, it releases toxic gases, which is really bad for the environment. So any of those you can say, I'm just going to say non-biodegradable. Okay, ethanol can be manufactured by the fermentation of glucose. State 
two other so one condition is using enzymes in yeast and what is the other two conditions you have to use for fermentation so basically fermentation we describe it of aqueous glucose at about room temperature so 25 to 35 degrees celsius in the presence of yeast and in the absence of oxygen so you can say 25 to 35 degrees celsius in temperature and then obviously the absence of oxygen because we want it to do anaerobic respiration Okay, so those are the two other conditions along with the yeast as well. Okay, so the structure of ethanoic acid is shown and we basically have to complete the dot and cross diagram to show the electron arrangement in a molecule of ethanoic acid. So when they've given you the displayed formula, it is so easy to complete the dot and cross diagram because it basically shows you where, where there is going to be a double bond and where there's just going to be a single bond. So a single bond indicates just one pair of electrons, while a double bond will indicate two pairs of electrons. So basically that's what you gotta do. You just gotta draw some dots and crosses. Okay, so you can see here, the only place where you're gonna have a double bond is with the carbon and oxygen. So you just gotta do this and everywhere else would just have a single bond. And that's basically it. So when you have the displayed formula, basically everything is done for you, you just gotta represented by the electrons. So this question was uh, the first question actually, so it's just repeated. Um, the structure of malic acid is shown on the structure, draw a circle around the functional group of alcohols. So you're supposed to know the functional group for alkanes, alkenes, alcohols, and carboxylic acids, and esters. Um, so the alcohol functional group would be OH. So here you can see we have two places, or oh, actually three. So I'll just, just circle this, this, or this. So any, any three, any of any one of these three. Reduce the formula of malic acid to show the number of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen atoms. So basically, you just count them. So you always start, usually the it goes like C H O. So the number of carbons first, then hydrogen, and then oxygen. Carbons, we have one, two, three, four. Hydrogens, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Oxygens, we have one, two, three, four, five. So your formula would be C4H6O5. So just count the number of elements that there are. Tartaric acid can be converted into compound A, and the formula of compound A is C3H4O3. C3H4O3 and complete the table to collect uh, to calculate the relative molecular mass of compound A. Okay, so a number of carbon atoms they've already done and they've calculated that relative atomic mass of the carbon atoms. Hydrogen, we have four. So essentially four times one is four. The number of atoms of oxygen is three. What's three times 16? It's going to be 48. And then you basically just add up these three numbers. So 48 plus 4 plus 36 is going to be 88. So relatively simple question. Okay, proteins are natural polymers. Proteins contain amide link linkages. Uh, synthetic polyamides also contain amide linkages. And state or name a synthetic polyamide. So you have one in your syllabus called nylon, which is supposed to know. And identified the two functional groups present in the monomers used to produce synthetic polyamides like nylon. So we talked about this. It's going to be carboxylic acid and amine. So why would you be wrong to say dicarboxylic acid and diamine? It's because the question specifically tells you the functional groups. Okay, so you basically just have to say carboxylic acid. In a dicarboxylic acid, it's just two of those carboxylic acids. So Functional group is the only thing that's needed here. It doesn't say the actual compound that you need. It just asks for the functional group. So that's why it's sufficient to write carboxylic acid and amine. So there are three functional groups in compound A, and you have to name the homologous series of the compounds that contain the following structures. So C double carbon carbon double bond would be an alkene, OH would be alcohol, and COH would be a carboxylic acid. Okay. Now, ethanol can be manufactured by two different methods, either fermentation of sugar or the reaction of ethene with steam. 
give one advantage of using fermentation compared with method two. So it is um, more sustainable and renewable because obviously ethene is a hydrocarbon in which you have to crack um, petroleum, which is obviously not sustainable and renewable. So the advantage is that sugar is renewable. It's a renewable source of energy. Now give one a disadvantage of using fermentation compared with method two. So it's known for being really slow process, which obviously is a disadvantage. So it's a slower process. Okay. And ethanol can be manufactured from ethene. Ethene can be made from long chain hydrocarbons such as decane. Ethene is then converted into ethanol. Name the process used to obtain ethene from long chain hydrocarbons such as decane. So we talked about this fracking. And again, to complete the chemical equation, make sure you have the same number of carbon and hydrogen atoms as you have in the reactants. So here the, it is a bit different because you have um, two spots left. So it's two spots to fill. So you don't necessarily know like what kind of um, thing to do. So as you know, here we have an alkene. So if you already have alkene, we have to have basically two other alkenes as well. So the only way to have two other alkenes would be to do C2H4 and C, C4H10. Sorry, my bad. This is an, yeah, this is an alkene. So the only way to do it is to do have another alkene and another alkene. So that's basically, and make sure they add up to the reactant. So the carbon atoms react to the number. 10 and the hydrogen atoms add up to the number 14 sorry 22 and write the chemical equation for the conversion of ethene into ethanol so this is by the reaction of steam so ethene is c2h4 plus h2o here they haven't specified to give state symbols so we can just write that and ethanol is c2h5oh and that's basically it. If you have any questions, please put them down in the comments and we will be happy to assist you. Thank you for watching.